Welcome big dogs. Today we're going to construct our object oriented program of a solid circular shaft stresses. So this is our old program where we calculated the solid square shaft stresses and you can see here it's it's got an object oriented flow to it and um, really we're not doing anything much different here. We have our element 1, element 2, element 3, 4, and 5 classes. We're just going to leverage those in our circular stress class. So what I've done is I've already went and coded it and essentially it's got the same construction as our solid square shaft class. We put in our three forces, our three moments, and then we give it a, a diameter instead of a side length and then we basically use composition to instantiate our element one, two, three, four, and five. And then we have some updated methods here. We have our areas changed, our area moment of inertia is changed. We've added a polar moment of inertia that we use for a torsional stress calculation. And we've updated this torsional stress equation. But other than that, uh, yeah, we've also updated our max shear stress equations in the x and y directions but we kept the same methods beyond that so we'll just do a direct comparison to show how similar they are and it shows you how easy it is to uh, leverage what we've already done so we really didn't have to do much work here so if we compare them side by side here they are we have the same attributes here forces and moments uh, we have our instead of diameter we have side length and then we have our elements we have our area methods area moment of inertia torsional stress max shear stresses and then we get our max and min principal stresses and our max shear stresses all more circle so really if you want to translate this to this program it's real easy to do um, it's a concept called refactoring so you can highlight a variable and you can do alt shift r and you can actually rename a variable so in this case we just want to change it to length to mimic r solid square shaft class um, you can go to preview and you can go in here and it'll rename every diameter variable to length and it goes through and does that for you so you can say okay and it updates it so we can do the same thing with other elements but that's what was done I'm gonna say control Z get us back to where we started but that's a little tip on programming in Eclipse uh, using Python refactoring is a, an efficient way to change your code uh, instead of going through variable by variable and changing it. So next we're going to basically execute this program to see if we get the same result that we calculated. So I'm using the same test code script um, that we use for the solid square shaft. I'm just going to update this. So to instantiating the solid square shaft class, we're going to instantiate the solid circular sh shaft class. So I can just press enter there and it imports the module that I need. And then everything else should say the same. We're looking at our sigma y on element 4, our shear stress on element 4, and then we determine more circle, and then we get the max principal stress on the face of the circular cross section. So I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to run this. And you can see here it prints out our axial stress and our shear stress, and if we go compare that to values we determined with our hand calculation we can see they're the exact same 2.53 52.63 maybe a little rounding error there but you know it's within reason and it went ahead and plotted our more circle as shown here 
and then it's going to print out our max principal stress once we exit out of this. So our max principal stress is 132.8 psi, and we can go through and we can actually change it to elements uh, element one, two, three if we wanted to, and identify what that stress is, or we could write a method that tells us that. But anyways, um, I hope you see how easy it was to translate the circular stress class and leverage what we've already built. I just wrote one more class, that's it, and I leveraged all the other classes. So that's the advantage of object-oriented programming. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Adios.